so much fun. Great Lakes here in Michigan. Freezing cold today. A couple offshore pits. And what a day. Psyching. Yeah. What's up, Nub Nation? Good morning. I'm gonna finish this edit up. Hope you're having a good one. Pretty soon this whole city will be covered in snow and ice. None of these people will be outside. Temperatures can get down to about 11 degrees, 10 degrees or even 10 degrees below zero. And the water temperature can drop to a stunning 28 degrees. That's below freezing. And we've seen New Jersey freeze over. We've seen the ocean and the bay become ice. We've seen icebergs form out in the water. It gets cold. But during that time, the waves get really, really good. As surfers in the Northeast, we don't necessarily fear the cold. We embrace it and we get ready for a long winter a good surf. What's up guys, Ben Gravy here in my backyard with my entire wintertime quiver. This involves three winter wetsuits, two pairs of boots, and two separate sets of gloves. A playa jacket and a couple of different surfboards. The winter times on the East Coast and especially in the Northeast. And if you keep pushing further into New England or head out to the Great Lakes, it can be extremely brutal for a surfer. But if you're dedicated to the cause and you really want to find good surf throughout the winter, you can make it happen and here's how you can do it. In the mid-Atlantic in the Northeast, like New Jersey, New York, Virginia Beach, um, Maryland, Delaware, these states, you can usually get away with just a 543 wetsuit with a hood, five millimeter boots, and five millimeter gloves. I rock the Hyperflex 543. This has been uh, one of my favorite wetsuits. This is the Viral 543. I usually, if I'm surfing in New Jersey at home, I rock five millimeter boots, five millimeter gloves. But there's a couple tricks to the trade. It depends on how good the surf is, right? So my trick is that I have two wetsuits. Here's one 5'4", and here's another 5'4", and I have two separate pairs of boots. So in the morning, I'll paddle out in a 5'4'3 wetsuit with five millimeter gloves and five millimeter boots on, and I'll surf for a couple hours, come in, freezing cold, there's snow on the ground, you know, you're, you're completely freezing. So I'll come in, and I'll head back out for the afternoon session, and I'll rock my second dry 5'4'3". I'll wear my seven mil boots and my six millimeter gloves. Now, if you really want to be efficient at wintertime surfing, this is one of the best tricks that you can do. Some other things that are going to be your friend while paddling out in freezing cold weather, having a car that has heat. It's cold, boys. It's cold. That's a big deal. You can sit in there and warm yourself up while you're changing and even a couple minutes blast that heat before you paddle out. Hot coffee. If you don't drink coffee, maybe tea or maybe a uh, hot chocolate or anything along the lines of something that'll warm you up, maybe even soup. But before I paddle out, I usually drink a 24 ounce Wawa hot coffee and it just warms my body up. By the time I get out of my car, I'm sweating and ready for the cold water. If you're going to venture further than say New York and you're gonna head into New England or even travel up into the Great Lakes region where it can get much, much colder than here in New Jersey. We just got out, word of the day, frigid. Look, it froze the rope to my GoPro and just freezes random stuff all over your hood. You're going to want one of these. This is a Hyperflex 654 millimeter wetsuit. This thing is thick. 
chances are most people aren't gonna have two, six, five, four wetsuits. Probably the smartest move would be wear your five millimeter in the morning, definitely gonna be rocking six mil gloves in the seven mil boots, and then wear your six mil for the secondary session. If you're doing one long session, obviously strap into your six millimeter wetsuit, strap on your seven mil boots and your six mil gloves, and you should be good to go. The only time that, you know, these wetsuits don't work is years down the line after you've had them for a while when they get holes in them, water starts leaking through, and that happens to every wetsuit on the market, but you can patch those up with a little bit of wetsuit glue. Let's talk surfboards. Surfing in the winter time, chances are you're not gonna paddle out and do, have a gravel session. So most of the sessions that you're gonna be surfing in the winter, the waves are gonna be substantial, or at least head high, maybe a little bigger, and usually there's gonna be a lot of offshore wind. Uh, offshore wind blowing into the waves can definitely make it harder to catch them. So what do you want to do to maybe put yourself in a better position for wintertime surfing? You can get a bigger board or a board with more volume. I'm usually riding a 5.8 unit. This is a super brand unit. I'm usually riding a 5.8 with 29 and a half liters of volume. But for the wintertime, I'm riding a 5.9 with 31.9 liters of volume. That's almost two and a half more liters of volume to keep me more buoyant in the water, make up for that excess weight and help me catch waves easier when it's freezing cold out and blowing offshore 25 miles an hour. So I think stepping up your board can be a big help surfing in the winter time. A couple other things that I've heard people using is potentially putting Vaseline on their face when the wind is blowing really, really strong. And uh, I've seen my friend Rob Kelly put a ski mask on because it was so cold out and the wind was so fierce and piercing through his, his face that he, um, he wanted to rock a ski mask to cover it up. We talk about this all the time. The wetsuit adds extra pounds to your deal. I wanna see the experiment go down in person. I wanna see how much extra weight we're adding when we put on a wetsuit and we're sopping wet and see how much extra volume we really should be riding when we paddle out in the winter time all right guys right now i'm gonna jump on the scale rocking nothing but my super brand board shorts come on all right guys right now i'm weighing in at 184.8 I'm gonna go outside, strap into the winter wetsuit and see how much weight it actually adds for a session. All right guys, so this is before the wetsuit is wet. We're gonna see how much this thing weighs dry. All right, I'm up to 190.4. It's almost six pounds extra. Now we're gonna get this thing wet and see where we lie. Down the front. <laughs> really drench it. Huh? Really drench it. All right, now we're wearing the wetsuit fully wet and see how much weight you actually gain going surfing. Might slip on the scale. <laughs> All right, here we go. Wow, 193.2. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so on the super brand website, using the volume calculator for the unit. Now, taking the account, this board is supposed to be ridden four to six inches shorter than your average shortboard, but it was the only board that I had to show a wintertime surfboard. My volume, according to the Superbrand volume calculator on the website for any given surfboard should be about 29.5. So the 5.7 unit is 29.7. I'll take it. I can ride with that. So now let's figure out what my volume would be in the winter time when I'm weighing 193.2 in my wetsuit. We have to think that that shower is not even gonna get me as wet as the ocean will. My wetsuit's gonna be way more drenched, so I could be up to 195. I think a wet wetsuit while surfing can add up to 10 pounds. I'm gonna do the calculation for my volume would be if I was weighing 10 pounds more. All right, let's do 194.9. So the, the unit that I'm riding actually falls perfectly under the volume that I should be riding. If I weighed 194.8, which is 10 pounds heavier than I weigh currently with my wetsuit on, sopping wet, they're putting my volume liters at about 30, 
1.9 and that's exactly the 5.9 unit that I was riding so it looks like in a winter suit your volume can be anywhere from 2 to 2 points higher I was very surprised to actually see how little the wetsuit weighed with water in it compared to how much the wetsuit and boots and gloves weighed before they even got wet. Pretty interesting stuff. I hope that was informational for you guys. That is how to surf in cold water. I know it's not an exact science. For everyone, it's different. Really, the best way to figure it out is just go out there, try it out, and have some fun. You could need a thicker suit than me. You could need a thinner suit than me. You might not need to chug a coffee before you paddle out. You might not need to sit in the heat in your car. Everybody's different, obviously, and uh, the best way to do it is just get out there, find the journey, find the adventure, and get yourself into some cold water surfing. Right now, guys, I am packing my board bag and my clothing bag, and tomorrow I am flying to Indiana to check off my 26th state surfed. Uh, there's gonna be some waves on the lake, and if you live in Indiana, hit me up because I'm gonna be around, and I'm really, really excited, so thank you guys for all the support. Nub Nation for the win, as always. Junebug, saying goodbye. Say bye, Jay. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for everything. And I want to send some positive energy and some prayers out to my good buddy and a guy that supports me, Mark Kelly. He's going through some stuff. And uh, Mark, I just want to say that sending some good positive vibes your way, some love your way, and everyone in the Nub Nation, send Mark some good vibes. And uh, thank you guys for everything. And I will see you tomorrow for another journey.